Earlier on, myself and Gio did a video about the Ngakia situation, which came as a bit of a bolt from the blue for a lot of people. Yes, we discussed it back on a cup of tea. I believe it was at the end of April. But I think everybody was sort of expecting a resolution to be reached and a contract to be signed. Uh, if you want to go and look at that video, I'll pop the link at the end of this one, by the way. But as with all of these things, the news moves very, very quickly. So you get claim and you get counterclaim. And I've been looking to try and sift through a little bit of this. Now, we don't do an awful lot of in the know or exclusives at Hammers Chat. But what I did was I actually contacted the club to find out the truth. The reason being, and I've got an answer, by the way. The reason being is I've seen a couple of reports. Number one, that Ngakia was only offered uh, an extension of scholarship terms, which would have been, well, hundreds of pounds in, in the hundreds rather than the sort of footballer's wages that you and I would be accustomed to reading about in a newspaper. I wanted to clear that up. And also there were a lot of there were a lot of people saying that um that the club hadn't offered a lucrative deal or a good enough deal. So I contacted the club and the club in their own words had said to me that he'd been offered a three year contract on a big basic wage with huge appearance bonuses. And then it would be ratcheted to so be looked at again after 10 games, after 15 games, and then after 20 games. I say games, sorry, I mean starts. Now, this is very, very similar to Declan Rice's deal, of course. But for reasons I want to talk about in just a minute, he's not in the same position as Declan Rice. Now, the club have been trying to sign him to a contract for the last 12 months. However, once he got into the first team... The club then looked to offer him an improved terms because clearly Ngakia's situation had changed. He now wasn't somebody that was in the youth team. He was somebody that had made one, two, three, four first team appearances. So they looked to revisit it. During that 12 month period, Ngakia had changed his agent. And this seems to be the key point here. Now, he's leaving as it stands on the 30th of June. And I think this is quite key because reading between the lines, if you sign a pre-contract with a club, which he's eligible to do, by the way, that new contract, by the, by the terms that are still in place, forget what's happened because of the suspension of football. These terms are still in place, by the way. A pre-contract at a new club would start on the 1st of July. So we would have to leave West Ham on the 30th of June which is clearly what he intends to do. So, again, looking at it, I would, I would suggest maybe that he may well have signed a contract elsewhere. He may well be very, very aware of what he may well be getting. Now, this is, this is bad news for the club, make no mistake about it. But if you remember, we did have a similar situation with Declan Rice. And I just wonder, because I do feel that as I mentioned in a video earlier with, with Gio, I feel almost as if Ngakia could be the loser in this. Because he doesn't have as strong a hand as Declan Rice did at the time. Cast your mind back. Number one, I think Declan Rice was, was possibly on a little bit more money than Ngakia because Declan Rice had made a, made a number of first-team appearances before he had... Um, before those contract negotiations had started to happen. Also, Declan Rice was an international, let's not forget. But he was an international with Republic of Ireland. And when he played for the Republic of Ireland, he had become, I think he'd got, he may have played three games, possibly been man in a match, or two of them. Not only, so not only a young, um, fledgling, budding international, but a good one, looked like he was going to be a good one. Now, at this time, he was also being courted by Gareth Southgate's England. The club were very, very aware of this at the time. He, he took a long time to make a decision, rightly so. It was an important decision, very important decision about his career. So he took a long time about that. But it was clear to one and all that he was going to be an England international. We'll never know the behind-the-scenes conversation that happened between Declan Rice and Gareth Southgate. But I think it's safe to assume that Gareth Southgate said, look, if you snub the Republic of Ireland, I'll make sure you get some caps. We'll give you a fair chance. So my point is... Not only is he an, 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 an international for the Republic of Ireland, he looks like he's going on to be an England international. And he'd already proven himself. And let's be fair, an adaptable player, Declan Rice, could play at centre-half and play at midfield. 
it, 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 he was just always going to get a bigger contract. So you you fast forward to now with Ngakia and his new agent. And I just wonder if he's overplaying what is really quite a weak hand in this. Because Ngakia looked good. He looked promising when he came in. However, Ngakia only got his chance because Ryan Fredericks had a knock. Zabaleta had been turned inside out by quite a few players. It looked like Zabaleta's legs are gone and it wasn't really an option to play him. Plus, he was carrying a little niggle at the time as well. And Ben Johnson was injured. Now, make no mistake about it. Ben Johnson is the one in the club who is really the most highly regarded, let's say. There was a time over the last year or two when Ngakia was almost let go by the club anyway. Whether or not you think that was a good or a bad decision, in hindsight... Probably not a particularly good one if they had to let him go because it looks like he's going to be able to play um, football. He's, he's going to have a professional footballing career. Yet the fact of the matter is that's why he got his chance in an area where really West Ham have, have strength in depth. Declan Rice got his chance because he was an outstanding prospect, not because everybody else in the race fell over. Because that's what happened with Ngakia here. And I look at it and I look at why he might have been... Um, if his new agent is sort of playing the game that Declan Rice was playing, then he's just not in that strong same situation at all. And realistically, bearing in mind the club don't know they have an income at the moment. They don't know what's going to happen with Sky. Don't know what's going to happen with BT. Not sure how many people are going to take refunds on their season tickets or anything like that. The club aren't in the same situation that they were when they gave Declan Rice his new contract either. Now, I think the thing is with Declan Rice, Declan Rice knew that if he was going to play a number of games, he was going to get quite a nice appearance bonus. And probably the certainty with Rice's situation was that he knew there were games coming up. Maybe if you're a player now... You don't honestly know when your next game's going to be. So when is your, if you've got a 20, 30 grand appearance bonus, when are you going to earn it? There hasn't been any football for months. So the situation with the club is different and the situation with the player is different. And I think it's a little bit of a messy situation here. And if I had to put my, if I'd put my cards on the table, I would imagine that he's probably been tapped up. I would imagine that he's probably signed a contract elsewhere. I'm not sure it's an illegal tapping up, uh, if, if that's the case, because probably if he's in the last year of his contract, he probably can speak to other clubs. Um, but it ain't a great one, that's for sure. And I certainly don't blame the club for trying to, for throwing loads of money at him. Because as I say, despite his injury problems, it looks like Ben Johnson is the better player. And the other thing to consider is, we know that it wasn't a case that David Moyes was thinking, I don't need to buy a right back. We've got this excellent young player called Ngakia in the academy coming through. I don't think David Moyes probably disagrees with the stance that the club's taking. Because David Moyes was looking at Matty Cash and he was looking at the guy Gonzalo, can't remember his last name, the right back at River Plate who's represented Argentina on two occasions. So clearly we were in the market for a right back. And I also, as I understand it, he has been at training. So I don't want to put it out there and say that Ngakia has not been training. He has. He's been training. And I don't expect anything other than for him to be 100% professional until the 30th of June. And I guess on this, time will tell. I would like to think that what happens is they're playing a game. There's a negotiation going on here. And eventually the two parties meet. They come to a deal. The deal's signed. We get we get the standard photograph. Well, we won't get a standard photograph because social distancing. I was going to say, you won't ever see anyone with their arm around anyone else while someone's signing a contract. He certainly won't be wheeled out onto the pitch anytime soon for it to be displayed in front of fans. But you know what I mean. I just, I'm sort of hopeful that an agreement can be can be made. But I'm not confident that that will happen. I'm not confident in that at all. In fact, my hunch is that he does just leave. And also, 
that when he leaves, we see him holding up the shirt of another club quite soon after the 30th of June. I hope I'm wrong.